Okay, well, let's talk about kind of what the assignments are this week before I go in to my last part on uh, thermal. So if you guys look at, again, if you open up uh, Canvas, you're going to see we are week four, as Dave pointed out, you're halfway home. The reading assignments this week, and again, I get a lot of questions about, do we need to read everything? You should be familiar with it. Definitely go through and observe what's going on, because the questions will be based off information there. Section three, basically, and four in your Stewart book, and then your Patty's book also will uh, have some information. Try to give you all the PowerPoints we're going to go through here. You do have a module four problem set, which again, all the study questions you can go through there. There's no time limit if you look at that. That's the easy one to go through. The one this week, that does have a time limit. We'll be quiz number two. So 25 questions, 50 points, you get 100 minutes. So again, this one will take you a little bit longer. You've actually got uh, questions in here that you may have to calculate, recalculate, check, go through that. So I think when I uh, standardize norm this test out with people, about 100 minutes will give you plenty of time to do it, okay? So any questions on where you're going this week? This is last year's face-to-face -face videos. You're welcome to use those. And uh, for the problem set on the practice, you know, if you want to go through those, I go through some problems. But that's what you guys look like this week. Good? Never good when you get homework, but at least it's there. Okay, let's go through another, just to hit some of the high points with the thermal stress. I wanted to take you guys through that. Um, if I can find the advancer. Basically here, again, are some learning objectives of this. You guys know hot indoor occupations. Here are hot outdoors. I don't have to tell you guys this, just some things. So physiological factors, we've talked a lot about this. Comorbidities, the health, the weight, the conditioning, you know, how they've slept, the medical circumstances, it's all there, and we'll kind of look at those. One of the terms you need to understand, or excuse me, four of the terms are heat, temperature, and this is where your patties will talk about it, specific heat, and then heat capacity. Again, some more terms, heat of vaporization, fusion, exothermic, endothermic, hopefully you're basically chemistry got it. Here's your thermal balance. If you look at it, this will actually, I wanted you guys to see both equations. Notice DH is the body heat storage load. It's a little bit different for, excuse me, different variable, same formula. So the body heat, st uh, heat storage load, again, how is it influence? I want you to pay attention to this. It's metabolic, air temperature, water vapor pressure, wind speed, medium radiant temperature, and type of clothing. Did we ever say anything about pressure? Water vapor pressure, right? So keep that in mind. That has an influence. I get a lot of questions about what is not on there and what should be. So again, the pressure is there. I wanted you guys to kind of, so just sitting here tonight listening to me, what's your metabolic rate? What do you guys think? In watts, and I should say that. So you're about 70 watts, just your basal metabolic sitting here. Now, what do you do when you start walking? About 170, so the range depending on there, 140 to 210. So here's some activities you can look at. So again, this gives you a feel for how many watts. If someone's doing an activity and you're trying to estimate, again, your heat load or your heat storage, it'll kind of help out with what your metabolic rate is. Here's one of the things, clothes workers heat gain. This is basically some equations you can use 
for heat gain when they're clothed and if you have nude workers. Oh, wait a minute, unclothed. So what do I mean by unclothed? What do you guys think? T-shirt. Yeah, just normal work uniform. It's not actually nude workers. Sometimes I knew they would catch you guys. So again, TR greater than 35, TR less than. So that was up there. Again, the convection heat exchange. Remember what convection versus radiant air. We won't talk about that. But again, a couple of equations for you guys to look at. And then the evaporative. Again, you've got this exponent 0.6, but it goes through all of the different evaporative. So I, I talked to you about heat stroke. What's the first thing that should jump out on heat stroke? What are you guys worried about if someone's in heat stroke? Yeah, loss of life, absolutely. And I didn't hear really, but it's loss of life. So this is 110%. It is a serious, serious injury. You notice this one on this presentation, I got smart. 40.5C, 104F. See, guys, I'm a quick learner. Now, this was just a newer one I put together. Heat exhaustion. Notice the temperatures as you look at this. This one normally a core body temperature, 40.5 to 104.5. This one, 38.5 to 101.3. This is heat exhaustion. Weakness, nausea, cold, clammy skin, fainting. Try to give you each of the description. Heat cramps. So now we're moving from very serious down to, okay, what do you guys do if you get a cramp? If your legs start cramping up, yeah, just stretch it out, maybe drink some water. Uh, it, sometimes people will tell you to take salt, don't do that. But it basically, uh, you know, again, what will end up happening, no significant body dehydration. Again, not life-threatening. Now, not treated, it can go into the other ones. Heat rash, again, basically the glands are plugged. This is important, you guys have heard. So what is hypothermia? How would you describe it with the definition on the board? Mm -hmm. And we said that temperature is about what C? Yeah, 41 or 5, I think we said. That's when you need to worry about it. Here's the thing I want you to remember. What happens to the core temperature? What did they say the body was trying to regulate it at? 37. 37. Look what it's dropping to. Yeah. And again, what happens to your blood flow? Why does the body try to keep the core temperature at 37? You want blood flow, oxygen, everything going. When it drops there, notice your blood pressure, respirations drop, and serious health effects can occur. So again, very important to understand that. This is one of those Renault syndrome that you guys will, will talk more about it probably during ergo, but I wanted you to recognize cold uh, temperatures will influence some blood uh, vessel abnormalities. And if you look, this is cooling of the skin it increases the likelihood. So I wanted you guys to see that, especially uh, when you talk about white finger disease. That's what the normal people, you hear the term white finger disease, you guys even know it. You've probably been outside in the cold enough, cold, wet, rainy, you know, your fingers will actually turn white as they get colder. So obviously not to the level this is talking about. Again, if you have skin exposed, you can get that slightly blue, purple, gray coloring. Kind of giving you guys some terms because occasionally you'll read things and you'll need to understand those. So again, cold disorders, frostbite, tried to give you an example, you know, uncomfortable sensation, damage from salt, frostbite can even cause amputation. So. In the U.S. right now, if you have to amputate a finger or a limb, 
you reported to OSHA. This is probably not one you want to do, you know, definitely want to protect the people. And then trench foot, again, the cold, wet, rainy, you know, basically persistent dampness and cold, but it doesn't freeze. And you notice the edema or slight swelling will come into play too. And chill bones is the name of this condition when it affects other parts of your body. So if you ever hear the term chill bones, all they're saying is, again, it's trench foot throughout the rest of the body. Can't call it trench foot if it's on your hand. Oh, wait a minute. So here's kind of what I wanted you guys to see, thermal measurements. Yeah, I went through those. Uh, yeah, let me go back one. Trench foot, I skipped by that one. Factors related to the environment. Again, if you notice air temperature, velocity, radiant heat, relative humidity, was there any pressure there? So thermal measurements related to the environment doesn't include pressure, but factors related to individual activities, clothing, we know that affects it. So here's just a uh, basically a thermal measurement you can see. You have simple source, it's what I showed you guys later. This is the manometer that we talked about. Again, that was the volometer we had over in the lab. We had the example. If you look on this, it gives feet per minute. Here's a uh, thermal volometer. That's kind of what we had over there. This one's a little bit different. So again, thermal measurements as you look at it, uh, you guys may know this, but if you've got airflow less than 0.2 meters per second, you're probably not even going to feel it, and then you can see heavy sensation all the way up to a meter and a half per second. Quick, Dave, what's the feet per minute? I know, don't, there's no quick on it. You can start doing my 1,000 to 340, figure that out and do a factor there. That's definitely a unit analysis. However, here's your psycho, uh, psychometric chart. What do you measure on this side? Your enthalpy, enthalpy of saturation, you can see here, wet bulb, this is your dry bulb, and this is your humidity. So again, wet bulb, dry bulb, and this is your humidity. You need intersecting there, and it actually gives your psychrometer chart. The problem with this, you have to have a psychrometer that you take out and spin around. Normally, we don't use those. Normally, you'll use the WBGT. Again, here's a swing psychrometer. I will tell you guys, I used these in 1984. That was the last time, and literally they did away with them not long after that, and we went to what you are seeing as the WBGT. But I just wanted you to see that one. Now, here's what we need to talk about calculations. So there's a couple of things on this calculation that make it somewhat complicated. So the WBGT values, Dave's question, can they be in Celsius or Fahrenheit? Yeah, you just got to be consistent. If your professor gives you one temperature in Fahrenheit and one temperature in Celsius, what do you got to decide? Yeah, use, use Fahrenheit, use Celsius. There we go. That's right. Like the rest of the world, you're going to use Celsius. It's only in England and North America would they ever use that. I'm sure I'll get hate mail on that. So. Why outdoors do we worry about solar loading? Yeah. Well, wait a minute. Indoors, I don't have solar loading. Somebody will tell me, what about, is there any solar loading indoors? Sun's outside. It's shining through windows. It's insignificant, so that's why it's set up. Do you notice what they do? Basically, uh, two, when you're looking at this, your wet bulb, your natural, your uh, globe, and your, uh, your natural wet bulb, and your temperature. If you look at those, it tries to adjust it around. So this was a 
kind of a, a weird setup of a WBGT. Here's the one you guys saw. So you can see, again, globe, uh, wet bulb, and dry bulb. Regular temperature, humidity, solar loading. I talked to you a little bit about the wind chill index. Again, air speed, if we go down, polar vortex around 40. The temperature was a negative 10, 15, you're right around negative 43. Just a good check there. This is where I'm going to warn you that I think, I think I've gotten rid of most of the heart questions. Now, I'm sure when you guys go in, if you see one, let me know. But it basically, this is the physiological monitoring heart rate, and it's basically 40% uh, to 20 minus age, plus 16 resting heart. I'll tell you, unless you're doing very complicated work, stay clear of this one. Remember the 180 minus your age, or 110. The uh, physiological, your body temperature, uh, 0.7, 220 minus your age. So again, that gives your maximum or uh, your body temperature. So how do you control it? Can you eliminate heat? No. Cold? Usually not. They've got to work in those of our... Can you substitute? Maybe. Yeah, well, usually you can't substitute anything. So you've got to go to engineering controls. And your engineering controls, you want to control metabolic heat production and, again, your radiant load. So what are you, what are you going to do here? You're going to do basically powered assistance for strenuous work. So you guys think about it. What are you going to do if you have a really difficult job in a hot environment? What are you going to do? Let's say you've got to pick up 12 boxes that weigh 20 pounds each and you've got to move them, you know, 100 meters. What are you going to probably do? Move one, take a break, move one, take a break. Okay. There you go. Dave's going, actually, he's ahead of me. He's going to some of the other controls. What if you were going to try to apply engineering? What would you do? Put them in a trailer and drive something. Put them in a trailer or a forklift or something there. So you want to uh, basically reduce the physical demands. Again, controlling it, you want to make sure that the temperature is above 35 degrees and uh, you want to cool them. Again, decrease humidity, increase the airspeed. Now here's what will be very difficult. Sometimes when you increase the airspeed, it doesn't always help. And go back to your calculation and look at that. Again, here's what Dave said. I'm going to schedule routine repair work for cooler, work rest regimens at your administrative. So if you look at your engineering versus your administrative, a little bit of difference there. And again, how are you going to do that? Increase the workforce. If you have a hard job, get more people to do it and also make sure people are prepared for work. So here's your last, some other administrative for cold areas. Again, uh, substitute, isolate, redesign the equipment process, use general spot heating, uh, minimize the air velocity, and again, just go down through the PPEs, the big one there. If you're looking at that, that's where you want to be. And I tried to give you guys lots of ideas for cold, because we always think of heat, but cold's a little bit more difficult, okay? And I tried to even talk about different medical surveillance programs you can do to encourage workers, get fit, stay in shape, get plenty of sleep. Wouldn't that be great in a perfect world? So, tried to give you guys lots. Any questions on thermal?